Hey, what's going on, people? Just to let you know, the 50 Laws of Hustling. Do this book totally, totally different. I'm going to release it to Hustler University and the Hustler Mindset Project first. Essentially, we'll do a law a day with overview for 50 days, starting probably the end of the month or the 1st of September. And then once it's all done, then I'll release it to everyone else. But the best experience will be getting the Hustler University experience. So if you don't know, you still got time to get in on the deal. Hit that link below and you'll be good to go. All right, let's get into the video. It's a burner. Scared money never made money. It's a phrase that I embrace, I believe in. I think it's the gospel. But before we get into that, let's talk about what is money. There are many different forms of currency. When you speak of money, most people, the immediate default is this, you know, my uh, toll booth money. And it's more than that. It's way more than that. It's significantly more than that. There are many different forms of currency. Spiritual currency, physical currency, mental currency, creativity, emotional. There's so many different forms of money, wealth, assets, assets or resources. So if you are in a constriction mindset, i.e. scared scared money never made money then you actually chase away the things that you want let me break it down for you so it's forever broken you cannot own, have, cultivate gather, collect amass things that you despise if you're scared you despise these things because if you weren't scared, there would be no fear. You, you know, a lot of people are going like, well, I don't, whoa, 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 Glendon, I don't get that. You know, I don't despise being, you know, wealthy, but I'm not wealthy. Uh, maybe you are. But in a bucket, you cannot have the thing that you're really scared of or despise or worry about all the time. You can't have it. And they're going, Why? because you predominantly fill your mind with the very thing that you don't want pushing out the thoughts the wishes the dreams the stuff that you do want there's an immutable law of nature only one thing can occupy one place at one time unless you get in quantum physics because all that sort of stuff in science fiction but for most of us who are not on that plane only one thing can occupy one place at a time so if you are scared with your money whatever currency that may be you fill your mind with the very thing that you don't want to ensure that you get the thing that you don't want because the thing that you do not want is the thing that you think about all the time I used to get tickets like a fool because I would get on the road and I'll just give you the whole deal. I would see cops and I'd get really nervous. The hair on the back of my neck would stand up. And it wasn't the cop. It was the repercussions of what could happen if I got a ticket. Which was creating that fear. Which created that preoccupation. I thought about it all of the time. All of the time. And... It became true. I remember there was a month. I got to 540. I got three tickets in less than 25 days. One more ticket, I was going to lose my license. I mean, it was just... <sighs> and then I remember I took a trip a long time ago. Atlanta up to D.C. I had a Nissan Stanza at the time. I was in the military. A Stanza would do 110. It took a minute to get up there, <laughs> but it would do it. 
I went from Atlanta, Georgia to the D.C. area in about 9 hours and 45 minutes. Flying. Rolling. Rolling. And I know that I passed at least four state troopers. And this was back when they first did it. This is when they had the Mustang 5.0s. And they had, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina state trooper in little gold leathers. You didn't know it was a trooper until it was too late. I passed these people flying. But my mind was filled with my trip. My mind was filled with, I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to have some, some, some fried chicken and Momo, you know, some, some of these chicken and Momo sauce, whatever was going on back then. Go-Go music was hot. Flying. Didn't get a ticket. Passed the cops. And I look back when I went into a moment of scared little bitchness because I think two things happened. Going back to First Sergeant Branch, he told me, you know, when we got graduated basic training, whenever you get pulled over by a cop, make sure you pull out your military ID and hand it to the officer with your driver's license. I did it several times. Each time I did it, I didn't get a ticket. One trooper kind of yelled at me, I don't need that, son. I don't need that troop. And he gave me my military ID back, but he didn't give me a ticket. So I had in my mind that I could speed and not get tickets. So I wasn't preoccupied with getting tickets. At some point, it changed, and I got that little scared little bitch in this, and I started collecting tickets. It took me about a year because I was driving like Miss Daisy. I was driving like a little scared bitch. Like, oh, Lord, is there a trooper? And once I changed my mindset, I stopped getting tickets. I necessarily did not slow down at that point. I became a stealth driver on high alert but looking back at how these things dropped looking back at how they developed I now understand what was happening back then I didn't have the mental acuity to understand it at the time but now I do these that, that the, what I just gave you is something that you can use for success you can use that to be successful doing whatever because Every goal that I've written down thus far, except for the new ones on the sheet, I've achieved. And I believe and I think about it. Because there are some people who are afraid to dream. I know it sounds crazy. How can a dream hurt you? How can having a dream be a problem? There are some people who are patently afraid to dream. They are so scared to dream because if they have this dream and it doesn't happen next thing you know they're crushed they're demoralized they they feel like a sucker they feel like a fool for dreaming dreams are for children and I'm not a kid so they don't dream I think that is misguided thinking I dream all the time a daydream. I think about what I want in life. <clears throat> I fill my head with it. And I, I think about it. And it's so funny. I'm doing this <laughs> video. And I'm about to pass. Uh, yep. Georgia State Trooper. Now since I'm over in the right hand lane. And I'm just cruising. And I don't know what's going on. Looks like he's. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, he's re-aiming. It's funny that I'm doing this video and there would be a cop. And he's going to get somebody who's not thinking or filled with dread on these tickets. But being afraid to dream is a form of scared money never made money. If you're afraid, scared to dream, it's not going to happen. If you're afraid to spend money, you're not going to get more money. Fortunately, now this is what's really cool. Fortunately, we live in an age right now that you can literally make money without spending money. You can literally make money online without spending money. It's, it's not a pipe dream. It's not a fantasy. It's very, very real. 
but it's about strategy, technique, and mental resources. So understand if you're in that position of scared money, never made money, if you're scared to release love, you're not going to get love. If you're scared to dream, you're not going to realize your dreams. Scared money, never made money is a very appropriate phrase. So if you're in a position that uh, you're experiencing all this fear, and, you know, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because think about the things that you think about all of the time. If you think of being better, having more, achieving gene, achieving, uh, ah, achieving your dreams, it happens. But most people are filled with dread. And part of that is marketing. How things are marketed to you. That like... Um, you do certain things, they show you images of your family to push those emotional triggers. So a lot of this dread is something that's pushed on you. So that's another thing you have to look out for. You have to learn how to manage your mental environment where that stuff doesn't phase you because if you have a plan for your life, plan for your family, it's not going to be so easy to invade that mental space as it is if you don't have any plan. Most people are repositories. That's why it's so easy to fill their head with notions because there's nothing in there already. If there was something in there and here comes this other stuff, it would bounce out because there's something already in there. Going back to what I said earlier is only one thing can occupy one place at a time. So that's why I say be sure to Fill your head with all kinds of good stuff. Books, videos, classical music. Fill your head with good stuff, and it makes it much harder for the bad stuff to get in. Now, if you are living a life of quiet desperation, that phrase came from a play or a book, I believe, you have to ask yourself, why? Why are you living like that? Why? And when you come up to that answer, with that answer, you're going to come up with a big solution that's going to solve a big problem, make your life better, easier for you to achieve the very things that you want in life. Because understand, if you're scared, you're filled with dread, that's your preoccupation. That's what you're going to think about all the time. And it's not going to bode well for your future success. So, just letting you know, that is the deal. That's what's going on. And this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side. Be sure to uh, sign up on my email list. A lot of good stuff comes that way. All right, I'll see you on the good side.